Welcome back. Let's take a look at uh, coronary arterial disease, cardiovascular. Now, with this topic, we begin referring to some of those physiologic concepts that we looked at earlier in terms of, well, how does the heart exactly work? What does it require in, in terms of its activity? It requires energy, it requires oxygen, it requires ATP. Well, there's really two components here that we're going to delineate, and then we'll go into a little bit of biochemistry that becomes extremely important for us. So it's all part of, once again, connecting all the dots. Let us first talk about the supply that is then required for the heart so that uh, it can work properly, so that it can create enough ATP through oxidative phosphorylation, so on and so forth. What if the supply was cut off? <laughs> now we got issues. If the supply has been cut off, well, now at this point, the coronary arteries are not supplying enough oxygen to the heart. Supply is being compromised. Atherosclerosis, up and down the body, is what you're thinking. As soon as you hear the prefix athero, you should be referring to lipid, period. Earlier, we talked about arterial. With arterial, it's just an umbrella. There could be many types of pathologies taking place in a blood vessel that may result in arteriosclerosis. But when it comes specifically to athero, with our topic of the supply being dropped or decreased to the heart, then it has to refer to lipid accumulation within the, well, in this case, a coronary artery. Now, the lipid doesn't have to be specific. The lipid doesn't just have to target the coronary artery. It can affect the peripheral blood vessels, and therefore, your patient may then present with claudication, peripheral vascular disease. Your patient might have issues with seeing properly, slurred speech, one side of the body, which is just quite weak. Welcome to stroke or cerebrovascular type of accident. So atherosclerosis can be up and down the body. Maybe your male patient has a hard time getting it up. What does that mean? Erectile dysfunction. So what I'm saying to you is make sure that you understand the full presentation of your patient before you come to any type of diagnosis to confirm it. So here, atherosclerosis in the coronaries would then be called coronary arterial disease. Now, depending as to how much buildup of the lipid in the coronary artery is then going to dictate what kind of diagnosis you have. And what kind of presentation you might have. What about this chest pain initially if, let's say, the atherosclerosis within the coronary artery was only 50 or 60%? This would be stable angina. This would be pain only upon exertion. What if you get past 70% occlusion and get into 80, 90%? My goodness gracious. The supply to the heart through the coronary artery is drastically diminished. And we have issues now, even at rest. Welcome to unstable or crescendo type of angina. You see what I'm trying to get at. What is important for you to also keep clear is to make sure that you delineate your cardiovascular diseases. What does that mean? Remember, when you say cardiovascular, it is once again the entire circulatory system, including peripheral vascular disease, including cerebrovascular accident, including your coronary arterial disease. You call that cardiovascular disease. Is that clear? And that is how you and me as clinicians, will then refer to your atherosclerotic process. But if it's specifically in the heart, then you call it coronary arterial disease. I hope that's clear. What's my problem? Supply. What's going to happen? At some point, the heart is not going to work anymore, depending as to the level of occlusion. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.